Well, good morning. Happy New Year's Eve. It's crazy to think that we are already at the year 2024. It's kind of crazy to say that, right? Well, I'm so thankful to be here with you guys this morning, and what a joy it is to gather together for one service today. If you're joining us online, just want to say good morning and glad you are with us wherever you are today. My name is Dan, and I'm one of the pastors here, and I have the privilege of supporting our middle school ministries team and working directly with our high school ministries team leaders and students. My family is originally from uh, California, and we've been Minnesota natives for the last year and a half. Uh, We've enjoyed it. It's been great. Uh, We had our first white Christmas last year, and I think we returned the favor this year uh, with not much snow. So, well, one of the things I love about working with our students is taking them away from their routines and just, you know, all the stuff that they got going on in life and really allowing them to sit in God's creation and lean in to God's prompting in their life and calling and to really listen to, to, to God's voice. And we do that through a number of ways. We take lots of trips throughout the year. One of those is in our fall retreat, we go up to Camp Chaminade, and Chaminade is one of the several camps here in Minnesota that offer annual programs and retreats for students and families and kids. There's actually a handful of them in California, and one of them uh, that my wife and I grew up going to um, in Northern California During their summer season, what they do is at the end of every week of camp, they gather everybody in the camp for what they call uh, Victory Circle. And I have a picture here to show you. Um, But Victory Circle is a place that they take all the campers and students to. There's hundreds of people kind of in one place. It's on Friday night. There's a fire pit in the middle. There's a worship band that uh, does acoustic worship under the stars. And it's truly a spectacular moment of corporate praise and worship. And the setting shifts partway through where uh, everyone's worshiping and singing to God together to then there's an open mic where the individuals can come up and share what God has been doing in their life. And some will share uh, that God has helped them through a tough season or they're ready to give up an issue to God or just that God's given them a a big breakthrough and that they're super, super excited about that. And it's a moment that a lot of campers enjoy because this is where they get to hear and share in what God is doing in and through his people. Well, today as we head into a new year, I want to take a few minutes to reflect on a psalm that displays a similar setting and take a moment to thank God for his power, his truth, and his mercy to us in our lives. So if you've got your Bibles, open up to Psalm 66. We're going to be in Psalm 66 this morning. And we're going to read the first four verses and then kind of pause and talk about it. There's also the term selah that is used throughout this psalm, which means to pause or to stop and reflect. But Psalm 66, verse 1, it's on here on the screen. It says, shout for joy to God, all the earth. Sing the glory of his name. Make his praise glorious. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. So great is your power that your enemies cringe before you. Last verse, all the earth bows down to you. They sing praises to you. They sing praises to your name. Now, the first thing we notice is the call to let all the earth worship God for who he is. Some commentators mention this being from one individual who is rallying God's people together for a moment of praise and celebration after receiving an answer to prayer. And the interesting thing to note here is that it's a call for all the earth, not just some or a majority, but for all to come. You know, when God answers our prayers, which can be a yes, no, or a not yet answer, God is still worthy of our praise. However, it seems like this uh, person may have had a positive answer to prayer and is excited enough that they want to share that and they want to rally people around them to be a part of this moment. So I want to ask you this morning, how have you been a part of a moment like that? How has God answered a prayer for you or someone else that has ignited this kind of fire, this passion, this excitement and enthusiasm? And I encourage you the next time that you experience that or uh, God answers a prayer for someone that you know, celebrate that. 
share that with others. The second thing we notice in this first section is the person who is inviting others to celebrate with them is giving an example of what to say. He says, say to God how awesome are your deeds. There's a focus here on praising God for what he's done and for his power against enemies. Again, nothing here describes what the cause for this line is for. However, this universal call for praise is directing the focus of the people to worship God and to lift up his name in shouts of joy. When I was uh, doing my undergrad at Azusa Pacific University in Azusa, California, I sang in the men's choir for a couple of years. That's right, I was a choir boy. Uh, Middle school, high school, and college. 85 men singing worship songs to God. I mean, it was spectacular to be a part of, but really cool uh, to, to, to listen to. And so I imagine this as I read this section and visualize what this scene must have been like. And there's something about God's people all worshiping together that gives us a true sense of what it means to belong to the family of God to celebrate as a body together. So regardless of what each day brings for us, we have a reason to sing and shout for joy because God's work in his people is ongoing. Let's look in the next section, Psalm uh, 66, verse five. It says this, come and see what God has done, his awesome deeds for mankind. He turned the sea into dry land. They passed through the waters on foot, Come, let us rejoice in him. Verse seven, he rules forever by his power. His eyes watch the nations. Let not the rebellious rise up against him. There is an invitation. Oh, uh, yep, yep, yep. There's an invitation to come and see what God has done. Again, this level of excitement is still continuing in this section. And the individual is, again, gathering God's people to celebrate and is now directing the attention now to God's deeds. Specifically, the time when God delivered the nation of Israel out of Egypt when they were oppressed by Pharaoh and the Egyptians. Now, we're going to pause there for a second. I find it interesting and kind of cool that the word awesome is in the Bible, I don't know if you guys thought about that. Uh, so I looked it up, okay? Uh, the Hebrew word is yare, which means to revere, to cause fear. In action, it's terrible. Some translations use that word instead. It's so impressive that it also strikes fear. Now, the reason why I mentioned this, even though it sounds kind of silly, is because the next line describes the crossing of the Red Sea and the Jordan River. And if you go back and read that account in the book of Exodus and God's deliverance of Israel, it must have been quite a sight, right? I mean, to see two walls of water on both sides, right? Something that probably drew great amazement, but also tremendous fear. And so the individual who is directing this psalm is inviting people to come and see, but also remember God's power that was shown for them to guide them into the land that he had promised them. And through this account, God's people are preserved and continued to be used by God to show the world who he is. So if it's been a while since you checked that out, I encourage you to go read the book of Exodus and reread that account. It's awesome. Uh, so when have you had an awesome moment with God? When was the last time you saw something that had not only amazed you, but it also reminded you of how powerful the God of creation is. I encourage you to reflect on that. Let's take a look at the third section of this psalm, starting in verse eight. It says, praise our God, all peoples. Let the sound of his praise be heard. He has preserved our lives and kept our feet from slipping. For you, God, tested us. You refined us like silver. You brought us into prison and laid burdens on our backs. You let people ride over our heads. We went through fire and water, but you brought us to a place of abundance. Key word there. So in this section, the people are called to bless the God who has preserved us. Us being the nation of Israel, having been rescued by God, delivered by him, and also put through many trials. 
Much imagery is displayed here, and I love that, which describes many times that Israel has had to undergo some tough times in its history. There are times when they were unfaithful and God allowed their enemies to conquer them. Times when Israel had strayed away and God rose up a leader or a prophet to guide them back on track. And times when the Israelites trusted in God to face their enemies and God led them to victory and deliverance. And through all of this, God is molding, he's shaping this nation into who he is calling them to be. I like verse 10. The individual speaking refers to times when God tested his people and he uses the imagery of testing silver. Now, I don't test silver on the regular, uh, but if you do, there's certain ways you can do it. It's kind of cool. Uh, there's like an acid test. There's like a magnet test, ice cube test. There's a noise test. There's a certain noise that silver gives uh, and a smell test you put in your hand. There's a certain odor if you smell to verify its authenticity and purity, Right? So God is testing Israel to keep them purified as God's people, a nation set on God's purposes for them. So when have you realized that a trial or an obstacle in your life has led you to a place with God where you came out more verified, more pure, focused on him? And Israel not only was delivered from these moments and accounts, but also given an abundance. And it's crazy to think that all those times that Israel was given an abundance, they shouted out to God sometimes, God, this is not enough. And I just, God reminds them several times, like, Israel, I want so much for you. I want to do so much through you. I'm going to give you what you need, but not everything you want. So when was the last time you thanked God for what he's given you rather than asking from him what he hasn't? It's when we don't have much that we realize we already have enough. We have an abundance with God. If you go back and reread the accounts of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob all the way through the Davidic period, his son Solomon, the lineup of good and bad kings that rise and fall trying to lead Israel well, you will see times when God steps in and guides them out of trouble or out of the pit of their own choices, reiterating the promise to be with them, to, to, to bless them, and to guide them. The next section in this psalm, verse 13, let's take a look at it. It says, I will come to your temple with burnt offerings. I will fulfill my vows to you. Vows my lips promised and my mouth spoke when I was in trouble. I will sacrifice fat animals to you and an offering of rams. I will offer bulls and goats. Now, this is where we see the shift from this corporate worship setting to a personal one. Here, the worshiper is proclaiming, God, hear my vow that I promised to you when I was in trouble. And the specifics of what kind of trouble this worshiper had experienced that led them to make a personal vow to God to bring them out of it is unknown. However, the result is shown in this thanksgiving offering and this burnt offering to God. Now, verse 15 lays out the kind of sacrifice that this worshiper brought to God in thankfulness and a fulfillment of their promise. This comes from Leviticus 22, which details the kind of sacrifices that were supposed to be burned when making such an offering. Let's jump over there real quick. Leviticus 22, verse 18, it says this. Speak to Aaron and his sons and to all the Israelites and say to them, if any of you, whether an Israelite or a foreigner residing in Israel, presents a gift for a burnt offering to the Lord, either to fulfill a vow, that one, or as a free will offering, you must present a male without defect from the cattle, sheep or goats in order that it may be accepted on your behalf. And so we see those same animals being mentioned by this individual in their sacrificial offerings. And God lays out for Israel in the book of Leviticus and Numbers the kind of offerings and sacrifices that were appropriate uh, for certain purposes. So simply put, hopefully I didn't lose you there, 
This person went through some kind of trouble in their life. They made a vow to God to rescue them from it, was delivered from it, and is now making good on that vow. Now, this made me wonder, how many times have I asked God for help and something, uh, making a vow to God, and then ended up actually fulfilling that vow? I would be lying to you if I said I fulfilled every vow I made to God and that God delivered me from every trouble that I faced. That being said, there is something to be aware of when this worshiper describes their vow and their fulfilling of it. And it's this, making a vow to God should not be seen as a bribe for God's help, but in response to our ongoing commitment to him and our gratitude for his work in our lives. And that commitment to him and obedience puts us in line with his will, his promises and his purposes for our lives, even in times of difficulty. So how many of us are planning on making a New Year's resolution? How about we make a vow to God for how we can be more in line with him knowing that he has and continues to guide us through life's challenges, pains, and mistakes. The last section of the psalm, verse 20, goes on to say, Come and hear, all you who fear God. Let me tell you what he has done for me. I cried out to him with my mouth, and and his praise was on my tongue. If I had cherished sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. But God has surely listened and has heard my prayer. Praise be to God who has not rejected my prayer or withheld his love from me. And so in this last section of this psalm, the individual worshiper shares the reason for this song of praise and thanksgiving. Lean in for a second. Because what he's saying is he's saying, hey, everyone, let me tell you how God has heard my prayer. This person calls for the people to come and listen about how God has heard their prayer. That their prayer was not in selfishness, but with praise and sincerity. A sincere heart that needs help while still striving to be faithful, honoring, and connected to God. So how mindful are we when we pray to God that our posture should still and always be of praise and sincerity? Prayer is not just a time to go to our Heavenly Father with our requests, but also to praise Him and commune with Him. There's times when I can catch myself praying more out of what I need from God rather than just talking to Him, thanking Him, thanking Him for His goodness and growing in my relationship with Him. Uh, Like I said before, it's been a joy and a privilege to walk alongside our high school students and our leaders, and the more I get to connect with them, the more my heart grows for each of them and what God is doing in their lives. This past summer, uh, we took two teams of students to two different locations for a week-long missions trip, and the first team uh, went to Kansas City, Kansas, and we took 20 students down uh, to partner with the church. And we prepared and planned and brought a three-day day day camp experience for kids in the community. And our team spent time each day uh, praying for God's guidance with each part of the day, each conversation that we were to have with the kid, leading a craft, a story, or a song, or hoping that the kids would grow in their understanding of God, his love, and his grace through Jesus. And it was so cool just to watch our students just really just pray and ask God, God, use me to share your love with others. It was so cool. Our uh, second team went down to Lake Charles, Louisiana, 
and we uh, partnered with Crisis Response and we took 11 students down there to help rebuild four homes that were severely damaged in the 2020 hurricanes. And each day there was a break from the labor and at each job site there was a break and we just walked the neighborhood. And we would stop at certain parts of the neighborhood and pray. And if we saw someone walking out of their house or going to and from somewhere, uh, we would just say hi. Let them know why we were there in the community that week and ask them if they needed prayer. And some would say, no, we're good. Uh, Some would say, oh, yes, yeah, please pray for this. And some would ask us questions and we would be able to share a little bit about our faith. And I can't tell you, man, the stories that our students brought back each and every night of what God had done through their groups. It was incredible to the point to where every morning when we prepped for the day, our students, our students were praying for more opportunities like that. We called them divine interruptions. And so recalling those moments when our students prayed reminds me of this psalm. And how this worshiper is so grateful to God for hearing their prayer and helping them through a time of trouble and rallying God's people around to rejoice with them. And so the point is this, God will always deserve our praise. It's that simple of a truth. This individual from God's people had experienced God's help in a time of trouble and he has made it known to them that God has heard their prayer. And God hears the prayers of his people. He knows what's been hard. He knows what's been difficult. And he reminds his people that they are not alone. Wherever you find yourself at the end of 2023, Know that you are not alone. God sees you. He hears you. He knows what's been hard this past year. He knows what's been challenging. And he desires you to seek him. To go to him. To run to him. And God has already given us an abundance He has given us his son that through him we gain a new purpose and a new meaning in this world. And I may not have much in this life, but why what God has already given me, I have an abundance and he deserves my praise. A couple application points. What does this look like for you guys today? A few points that I wanna share is first, just praise him no matter what. As long as you're breathing, you've got a reason to sing. Reflect on times when things were tough and good. Make a constant commitment to him. Take a step of faith all the time. It could be a a, a big step for you. It could be a little step, but take a step towards God and his plan for your life constantly. Lastly, thank him for what he's done and doing in you. Uh, One of the things that I've enjoyed uh, working with our students is just watching God move in their life. And it's been fun to see the things that God is doing and continues to do in and through our high school students. There's a group of students that I've been watching that uh, I've noticed they've rallied around a song. And I don't know if they would call this their battle cry uh, or their rally cry, But I know and I can tell that it means so much to each of them in their own uh, respective way. And it's a song that we first heard at our District Blitz Conference uh, in Duluth. We took students up to Duluth for a weekend in April. Um, It's a song that was put on our playlists traveling down to our missions trips locations. And this past fall retreat in October, the worship band played it and this group of students just got super excited about it. But I wanted to share uh, the verse and chorus of this song with you today as we transition into a time of communion together. And the song goes like this. So the song is called I Thank God by Maverick City Music. And the verse opens up like this. Wandering into the night, wanting a place to hide, this weary soul, this bag of bones, And I tried with all my mind 
and I just can't win the fight. I'm slowly drifting, O oh vagabond. And just when I ran out of road, I met a man I didn't know. And he told me that I was not alone. He picked me up. He turned me around. He placed my feet on solid ground. I thank the master. I thank the savior. Because he healed my heart, he changed my name. Forever free, I am not the same. I thank the master. I thank the savior. I thank God. And that's just it, isn't it? That God picks us up from our old life and turns us around into a new one and we are no longer alone. We are forever free, free to live for him and for his purpose in our lives. And when we take that step of faith and make that decision to say yes to God, there is nothing that God can't do through you. So if you are a believer and a follower of Jesus, this is a practice that we do to remind ourselves of God's sacrifice for us through his son Jesus. Go ahead and prepare your elements. And I'll read for us Luke 22 of the last supper that Jesus had with his disciples. Verse 14 says, and when the hour had come, He reclined at the table and the apostles with him. And he said to them, I've earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And so he took a cup and when he had given thanks, he said, take this, divide it amongst yourselves. For I tell you, from now on, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took some bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to them saying, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's take together. And likewise, the cup, after they had eaten, saying, this cup, which is poured out for for you, is the new covenant in my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's take together. Heavenly Father, we come before you and we just are so thankful for what you've done and what you continue to do in our lives. And God, we just want to take time at the end of this year to pause and say, thank you. Thank you for the times that were hard that you got us through for the challenges that seemed overwhelming, but you brought us through. For the breakthroughs, God, that reminded us that we are never alone. So Father, as we spend the last few hours today in 2023, may we reflect on that and step tomorrow into a new year with a new heart set on your purposes for us. Lead us, Father. Guide us. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen.